Coming up on this special edition of OC News, we dive deeper into a few stories that we found interesting. The last school year has been challenging for just about all of us. Just imagine what a brand new teacher had to go through. We introduce you to a couple of elementary school teachers who spent their first year working from home. As the number of cyber attacks continue to explode, find out how Cal State Fullerton is educating new computer experts to help fight cyber crime. Titans Baseball Home is undergoing a multi-million dollar renovation. OC News starts right now. Thank you for joining us at OC News. I'm Stephanie Mejia. OC News is brought to you by the broadcast journalism students at Cal State Fullerton. While most first-year teachers are excited to head into the classroom and meet their students for the first time, last year's group of teachers were unexpectedly hit by a pandemic and needed to adjust to the new normal. I spoke with a few teachers to hear about their experience. Lexi Ramirez is a first-year sixth-grade teacher in Northern California. She had been remote teaching since the first day of school until April 6th when her students headed back into the classroom. She always knew she wanted to teach. Lexi was inspired by her second grade teacher. Lexi graduated from Cal State Fullerton in 2019 with a Bachelor of Arts in Liberal Studies. She was ready to teach, but in person. Her first year of teaching would have been stressful enough. Then, add a pandemic on top of it. With Zoo, I've, I feel like I've had a good year. My students, about I have about half and half participation. So right now my classes are about, I have two classes and they're about 22, 23 students each. Um, I have about eight students who are doing the work and following along. One of the challenges that Lexi and her students face together are the access that they have to technology in their rural town. Since we live in a really rural community, we're just having internet, all the kids get hotspots. Some of the families have multiple hotspots if they have multiple students, but we still have, um, we still have had bad internet issues. First year teachers aren't only dealing with challenges, but also trying to find ways to understand and accommodate their students. As a first year teacher, I believe like I have that more understanding of like where the students are coming from, whereas compared to like some other teachers, um, they want their um, students' cameras to be on, they want their students' cameras to be like, they want them to be performing as if they were in a normal school. And I think that's probably been one of the hardest things for me to see is for teachers to not give the like credit to these students or not to be able to accommodate to these students, um, especially in times that we need to be there for the students. As teachers head back into the classroom, they're learning how to keep their students and themselves safe. There's been so much like second thought behind the things that I do now. I'm like, okay, like I'm going to have them work in partners, but like they're not supposed to share this or, you know, they can't share these things. So it's been a lot of just, I think, stress because I have to like second guess myself. I'm like, okay, but is that like if somebody walks in, would I get in trouble? Like, is that unsafe? This past year was full of a lot of second guessing for many teachers, but we're finally starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel as teachers and students head back into the classroom. A teacher in Claremont shared her experience learning how to teach first graders as a first time teacher during a pandemic. Reporter Alina Macias has the story. The first day of school is exciting and nerve wracking for not only students, but for new teachers too. Now imagine you're being a new teacher, fresh out of college, trying to teach during a pandemic. New teachers like Cynthia Gonzalez look forward to seeing her students this past fall. But with the pandemic, she was forced to learn new skills to be ready to teach online. And then over the summer I did, so I did do some like, I would guess I would call them trainings. Like I, did, I got Google certified where you take, um, you have to look through all the Google um, apps, I guess they're called, like, um, like Google Docs, Google Slides, um, Google Sheets. Um, there's a bunch of them. But I, over the summer when I didn't have a job, I like I tried doing as uh, much as I can to like put uh, add stuff to my resume. So I got Google certified, and when I told that in my interview, I think that helped me also. Her resume landed her a job in Claremont as a first grade teacher. It is her first job after graduating with a master's degree. But her college training didn't prepare her to teach completely online. In college. She learned how to teach students in person, but when the pandemic happened, she had to learn to adapt new teaching ways. Before, 
I started since I'm a first year teacher. I didn't have much. I didn't have much training. It was just based on my education that I went like at UCR. That's where I got my um, my teaching credential. That's pretty much all the training that I got. Like after that, I just applied for jobs, and then once I got hired, like I'm in the classrooms. Cynthia wasn't the only one who found online learning challenging. Many of her students, who were only six or seven years old, also struggled. Um, it's it was hard teaching them online. Like it, you have to teach them basically because they're little kids, so you would teach them um, like teaching addition and subtraction and like letter sounds and reading. That was the big thing. It was so hard to teach them how to read online, you know. And then we can't really do great small groups. Like that's usually how kids uh, at this age that they know how to read in small groups. You, you can't, it's hard doing it a full class. So it was really hard doing uh, small groups online also and all that. So it was definitely a challenge. Cynthia made sure to be there for her students when they needed help and tried to make online learning enjoyable. Yeah, I mean, I still had a good relationship with my students online. Um, I would stay with them after class and we would like talk about whatever they wanted to talk about. In March, the Claremont School District planned to return in-person learning. From that point on, Cynthia's teaching experience changed for the best. I feel like I love my job a lot more now that we're in person because like you get to see the kids and that's why that's why I, I do it, you know, for the kids. So it's a lot better. This is Elena Macias, OC News. Now that students are back inside the classroom, Cynthia has seen a huge improvement on her students that were struggling learning online. I could not imagine being a teacher right now. What were some of the struggles that Cynthia faced while teaching online? So some of the struggles that she faced was actually being there for her students that were struggling. She would say she noticed that they were falling behind and all she would really do was just be there virtually for them. But now that she's back in in person, now she has like more than one and builds her connection and she feels more involved with the students and they're actually be there for them to help them improve and academically rise. Well, thank you so much for your story, Elena. Next on OC News, reporter Mark has a look at what Cal State Fullerton Cybersecurity Program is doing to make sure you're secure while surfing the net. As a computer science student, Josiah Pedekill has access to a world that many people see as incredibly complicated. However, his true passions lie within the subsection of cybersecurity. Peter Kill is the president of the Cal State Fullerton branch of the Offensive Security Society. It's a club that functions as an outlet for students to practice the ins and outs of the discipline. He puts much of his time and effort into building his skills in cybersecurity, but acknowledges that people just don't put as much importance in it as they should. Um, without kind of people looking for vulnerabilities, without people trying to protect their network, um, we're really exposed to, to you know, the malicious people who, who want to to exploit the network and. Uh, really use it for their own monetary value. Um, and that's why cybersecurity is so essential. In the fall of 2019, Cal State Fullerton made cybersecurity an official concentration in the computer science major. The school offers various opportunities to hone your skills in cybersecurity. Cyber attacks happen more often than people may realize, many times being stopped long before they get out of hand. But it's the most harmful and large-scale attacks that gain national attention, like the recent realization of interference in the 2020 US election by Russia. Another big attack that brought the issue of cybersecurity to the mainstream was the 2015 breach of Ashley Madison. It's a dating website specifically meant for cheating spouses that saw the unwanted publishing of thousands of users' personal information by hackers. According to the Center for Strategic and International Studies, there have been 30 cyber attacks of note around the world in 2021 alone. Because of the ever-growing threat of these cyber attacks, OSS does encourage the learning of defensive tactics. However, there is a reason why offensive is in its title. I, I, I like to use this, uh, this example of, you know, like a detective, how they sometimes, you know, they try and think like a, maybe like a bad guy to then find the clues to find certain things. We do find something very similar, where we kind of maybe think like a hacker per se to find vulnerabilities, but then we report them. The various avenues by which CSUF inserts itself into the cybersecurity landscape have all culminated into the school's latest venture becoming certified by the NSA and DHS as a Center of Academic Excellence in Cybersecurity, a prestigious title given to colleges that demonstrate rigor in their cybersecurity programs. When your program gets accredited by, you know, the two biggest authorities in the nation in security, number one, is your curriculum changes toward uh, what the industry and the government want and need. And number two, when a student graduates uh, from your program and they're seeking employment, it adds more, you know, oomph to their resume. It's easy for cybersecurity to become an afterthought in our day-to-day -day lives. Luckily, the cybersecurity students at CSUF are looking to make it their job to cover your back. 
Cal State Fullerton is known for having a rigorous computer science program, so it's pretty relieving that there are people out there who still want to learn how to protect us while online. More to come, CSUF Baseball is getting a new on-campus facility. We have more details on that. Then a former NBA player comes to teach at Cal State Fullerton. All coming up after the break. Every professor develops their own unique teaching style, but one professor is preparing his students for the real world through a sports mentality. Adam Aranda has a story. What I learned in, in basketball sports, which is the teamwork and, and, and bringing things together, is what I try and bring into the classroom. Mike Milligan is a finance professor at Cal State Fullerton that uses his sports background to help his students prepare for a job, just like a player would prepare for a big game. In 1978, Mike Milligan scored 76 points to set a school record. It was that performance combined with his talent that allowed him to be drafted to the NBA by the Philadelphia 76ers. My teammates, my, you know, my teammates were as much a part of that as I was. And so I, I do share that the thanks with them because if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't have got it. It didn't take long for Milligan to realize that his calling was not in basketball, but in finance. In 1988, Milligan moved back home and decided to attend his parents' alma mater, Hofstra University in Staten Island, New York. Milligan earned his degree in accounting, but it was finance that he was truly passionate about. After college, Milligan went immediately to work on Wall Street. Not long after, Milligan picked up and moved to California to support his wife's passion for acting. After moving to California and earning his MBA from Pepperdine University, he applied and was hired at Cal State Fullerton. It was here that he discovered his love for teaching. I like to watch the light bulb go off when he go. I get it. I got it. Wow. Thanks, Professor. I get it. Milligan's background in basketball helped him develop a unique style that helped him prepare his students for the real world. Practice makes perfect, and that's what he emphasizes on his students. Role is your team is only good as its weakest link. And I think that's, that's something that hit me really hard because it makes a lot of sense. Milligan's sports mentality style of teaching has left a lasting impact on his students that they have taken around the globe. He genuinely cares about his students, whether it's in his class or outside of his class. And he does give amazing advice, um, you know, from Fullerton to, you know, being in Europe and now being in South America. I'm able to take all his advice and take it throughout the world. Now in his 16th year, Milligan has taken his passions one step further and was recently elected to state senate, which puts him on the Cal State board. His mission? To help students have the best experience they can in college. If teaching had a Hall of Fame, Mike Milligan has made his case to be in it. For OC News, I'm Adam Miranda. What a great way to get students to help each other achieve their goals, Adam. What was your favorite part about telling the story? Thanks, Stephanie. Uh, you know, honestly, learning about the team uh, teamwork and the team effort that he makes his students go through, I mean, it's absolutely wonderful because a lot of times you see professors tell their students, you have to learn this material on their own. But he encourages teamwork. He encourages his students to help each other out. If one member succeeds, they all succeed. And the cool part is their students still stay in contact with each other to help them get jobs and stay in contact with him to help them further their careers as well. And they've gone all around the world. Um, one of his students, Diana, I spoke with, and she was in South Africa. So that was really cool to learn. And you could see the, uh, how genuine he was because his students really care and they really wanted to make him look good. So I had a really fun time doing this. This piece could have gone on for 10 to 20 minutes. It was that fun. Thank you so much, Adam. We Thank really you. appreciate it. 
Well, get ready, Titan baseball fans, as a brand new renovated facility is officially under construction. Reporter Jacob Hobson has the latest on the project. Titans baseball is known as one of the most dominant college programs in the country. Their 18 College World Series appearances and four national titles really emphasize what it takes to win at such a high level. Although being such a prestigious program, the Titans have never had a home worthy of their elite status. That's soon going to change. This tunnel used to be home to Titans baseball greats and legends from past and present. A tunnel that led to celebration in the locker room after a win at Goodwin Field. Unfortunately, this hallway and its memories will soon be forgotten because Titans baseball is officially out with the old and in with the new. This captivating renovation of Goodwin Field's facility has been a plan in the making for the last three years as construction officially broke ground on the Titans' future clubhouse back in January. It's all part of a $15 million project to give the team state-of-the-art facilities that would help it remain on top of college baseball. Junior left-handed pitcher Sam Gomez is excited about what's in store for the future of Goodwin Field. Well, we're extremely thankful for like being able to raise so much money to have like such a nice facility like that's going to be built. Everyone will be humble to have it, especially coming from like not being able to change in a locker room. Due to the absence of a locker room to change into their uniforms this season, these college athletes have had to adapt to some unprecedented changes thrown at them. One example involving the bullpen pitcher's mounds. For years, Titans pitchers warmed up in the bullpen beyond this fence. Now, due to construction, the mound has been forced onto the field, which has sparked some adversity. Uh, the biggest thing about uh, throwing and warming up on the on-field bullpen is just you, you want to be too careful because you don't want the ball to go past the catcher and end up on the field and play. Most players say these inconveniences are a small price to pay for what they have in store for next year. The entire team is looking forward to starting the 2022 season with construction complete and using their new Titan baseball home. And they will continue to remain positive under this current adversity despite any curveball thrown their way. That sounds great, Jacob. Do you think that the new facility is going to bring more fans to games? I, I definitely do, Stephanie. You know, this $15 million project is definitely going to bring in thousands of Titans baseball fans, and we should expect tons of sellouts in the 2022 season. So make sure to get your tickets. Thank you so much, Jacob. Coming up after the break, have you been thinking about buying a house recently? Well, now is the perfect time and then a deep dive into graduate students and mental health. While it might seem like a time to relax, graduation can be just as stressful. You could be spreading the coronavirus without realizing you have it. So do your part and stay home. It's important to limit in-person interaction with anyone outside of your immediate household, but phone and video chat are safe ways to connect. It's also important to limit social gatherings. If you need essential items like food and medicine, try using a delivery service. If you must leave your house for essential items, or if you wanna take a walk for exercise, make sure to wear a cloth face covering. Stay at least six feet away from other people. Try not to touch frequently touched surfaces like light signals, street signs, or benches and wash your hands with soap and water for at least 20 seconds as often as possible. This advice applies to people of any age, including teens and younger adults. It takes all of us to slow the spread of the coronavirus, so stay home unless absolutely necessary. Visit coronavirus.gov for the latest information. Homes are selling like hotcakes. Crystal Gallegos gives us the story. In the midst of a global pandemic, Miranda Martinez is on the hunt for a new home. As a first-time homebuyer, Miranda is learning the ropes and is experiencing a process that she was not at all prepared for. I expected it to be seamless. If we were already pre-approved with the bank, have our down payment saved, we'd go look at a house, put in an offer, and in 30 days we would close escrow and move in. And that's not what it's been like at all. We've been looking uh, for a property since February of this year. 
Miranda and many other buyers thought buying a home in the pandemic would be easy, but it's turned out to be what's called a seller's market. Um, so we're, we're in a very tough seller's market right now just because there's not a lot of inventory. So therefore, if you have a lot of buyers, right, high demand and you don't have a lot of supply, the sellers can pretty much ask for whatever they want. Therefore, we call it a seller's market. With more buyers than sellers, now is not a time to be picky if you want to secure a home during this blazing hot housing market. The market is moving quickly. This home behind me was just put up for sale a week ago and is already expected to have a buyer within the week. With homes selling at rapid rates, potential home buyers are finding themselves in bidding wars. We've put in about six to seven offers and um, unfortunately our offer has not been accepted because the sellers have been um, going with the highest bidder and they've been paying out of pocket $40,000, excuse me, um, to $50,000. Um, so unfortunately our offer has not, not been accepted. What we're seeing is an influx of new buyers drawn to historically low mortgage rates. A year and a half ago, it would have been close to 5%, maybe 4.875. Right now, we're looking at like 3.5% in a scenario, something like that. And they're able to still get that 3.5% interest rate and, you know, not pay two dollars $300 in mortgage insurance. I mean, it's definitely a great time for a new buyer to get into a home. Like many others, Miranda continues her search during this difficult time for a new home for her and her family. I mean, I'm continuously working full time Monday through Friday, eight to five. On the weekends, I go to listings and they're booked. I put an offer, so it's it's exhausting. So it's it's having the time to actually um, put in the effort to find houses and also for sellers to take your um, your offer. And she expects to be in a new home by summer. Miranda has since finally found a home and will be moving in early November. It definitely is a hard time to buy a house as Crystal, but why is it a good time for people to buy them right now? So right now we're experiencing record low mortgage rates. And so because of that, buyers are drawn to secure those low rates. However, if you aren't financially fit, it may not be a good time. Um, so what buyers are trying to do is get their bid accepted. However, it's really tough right now. The market is fierce. And so if you do have a cash offer, chances are you will be getting that home. If not, it may be a couple of months until your offer is accepted. So it's really fierce and it's a battle of bidding wars for home buyers. And thank you so much, Crystal. We really appreciate it. Now for a look into how the class of 2021 has been doing with finals approaching. This past year has been a journey for college seniors as they prepare to finish their last weeks of school while still in a pandemic. Dawson Allen is amongst the graduating class of 2021 and touches on how staying at home has affected his mental health. So I feel like my mood does very heavily impact how I am performing in school and how motivated I am to do good work in school. So when things are going good, I'm good. When things are a little rougher, you won't find me nearly as motivated to get my work done to the best of my abilities. Whenever I'm feeling very stressed, running or just anything getting me outside makes me feel a lot better for sure. Allen says reading has helped a lot through overwhelming feelings, especially feeling the pressure to graduate. My last day's coming up soon. There is still much left in these two weeks for him to complete until receiving his bachelor's in business, but has persevered through his obstacles. Veronica Gonzalez is graduating with her bachelor's in child development, also facing similar mental health struggles. When I would go to class, I would be um, asking the teachers for help. And now since it's over through Zoom, I gave him more anxiety. So I would always like try to like ignore that. I would try to do everything by myself, which led to like really bad grade assignments. But even then, I would still not ask for help. Gonzalez recommends visiting the Titan Wellness Center for any future mental health concerns. Rong Woon Hong is a future senior that hasn't been on campus yet, but plans on visiting. I feel excited about going to school, like physically in the campus. I feel super excited. Yeah. As a graduating senior myself, I understand how mental health can impact your school life. Now, if you need any help in any way, please visit the Student Wellness Center. They're open from 9 to 5 p.m. If you'd like to make an appointment online, log into your student portal. I'm Sandy Ramirez for OC News.
Well, it's soon to be a wrap-up for graduates. We're so proud of you, Titans. That's going to do it for us here tonight at OC News. But remember, the news never stops, so be sure to follow us on all of our social media accounts at OC News CSUF. From all of us here tonight, I'm Stephanie Mejia. Have a good night. Thank you.